Hello, my name is Joanna Burke and I've written the history of Birkbeck for our bicentenary. Um, the book is simply called Birkbeck, 200 Years of Radical Education for Working People. The question I'm going to ask today is, well, what did Marcus Garvey do at Birkbeck? Well, 1912, a 25-year-old Marcus Garvey stepped off the boat at Southampton Docks. He had just arrived from Jamaica. According to the 1911 census, there were only 4,540 Africans, which included West Indians, living in the UK at that time. They were spread out in a large number of towns and cities. Garvey, who had just begun thinking seriously about issues of identity and race when he arrived, spent the next two years travelling around the UK. His base, however, was London, where, between 1912 and 1914, he attended classes in law and philosophy at Birkbeck. We're not sure um, who exactly taught him, but they must have certainly included Beaumont Maurice, a Liberal Party candidate, barrister, prosecutor at London's Central Criminal Court. From 1914, Maurice was also a magistrate in, in Bradford and had a reputation for supporting women accusing their husbands of domestic violence. Garvey was probably also taught constitutional law by G. H. J. Hurst, conveyancy, equity, commercial and bankruptcy law by James Samuel Green and patent law by William Martin. There was no actual philosophy department at Birkbeck when Garvey attended, but logic was being taught by G.C. Rankin, who had scholarly interests in ethics, democracy, Hobbes and international law before becoming active in legal reform in India during the 1920s and 1930s. Now, 20 years after leaving Birkbeck, Garvey recalled Birkbeck with great fondness. His time in London had been enriched by his friendship with Dusay Muhammad Ali, um, a, um, a Sudanese Egyptian. Ali worked as a journalist and stage actor, but he also wrote In the Land of the Pharaohs, which is the first modern history of Egypt written by an Egyptian. It was Ali who vouched for Garvey's honesty when he applied for a reader's ticket, admitting him into the British Library, which at that stage was housed inside the British Museum. There, Garvey first read Booker T. Washington's Up From Slavery. As he later recalled, this book made him realise his doom, if I may so call it. It was then the possibility of being a race leader dawned on me. Garvey was a keen and very vocal Birkbeck student. He could occasionally be heard haranguing crowds at High Park's Speaker's Corner, and supporters read his articles in the African Times and Orient Review. In the review's October 1913 edition, Garvey contended that the British West Indies was the mirror of civilization, and he saluted history making by colonial Negroes as an achievement that could be celebrated, that should be celebrated. His time at Birkbeck, in other words, was revelationary. He asked himself, Where is the black man's government? Where is his king and his kingdom? Where is his president, his country and his ambassador, his army, his navy, his men of big affairs? When he realised that I could not find them, he contended that he had a duty to help make them. On the 17th of June 1914, he boarded the SS Trent steamship as only as one as, only, as one of only three third class passengers, and he made his way back to Jamaica. During the month long voyage, he had time to reflect on what he had learnt at Birkbeck and in the UK. Five days after disembarking in Jamaica, Garvey and Pan-Africanist Amy Ashwood co-founded the University Universal Negro Improvement and Conservative Association and African Communities League. The Jamaican revolutionary Marcus Garvey, sometimes called the Black Moses, was born.
and throughout his life, Garvey spoke warmly about his time at Birkbeck. He visited many times and insisted that the tradition of Birkbeck College is one that every student can be proud of.